It has been an exciting week for the drivers on the regular season for the S&B Cup Series presented by Appalachian Hauler Hunters. But now the time has come to find out who will be the Season 2 champion. Live on LSR TV, your home for sim racing, it's the playoffs. And tonight, it's the Remington at the Glen 110, presented by LSR TV and Swag from the virtual Watkins Glen International on the iRacing Simulator from Rockin Watkins Glen, New York. Good evening. I am Wesley Outland in North Carolina, preparing for a winter storm. A man that is used to the winter storms in Spokane, Washington, is Mr. Greg Rents. And in the production chair, from Wichita Falls, Texas, the home of live sim racing is Charles Wooten. Greg, it's the playoffs, baby. Four races, four different racetracks, one champion when it's over with. And four very different types of racetracks at that. We're starting things off with a road course as the opener of the playoffs. Looking very forward to seeing what these guys do when they're turning right and left. Only one visit to a road course earlier this season in the regular season. That was the Daytona road course, which was won by the regular season champion Braxton Deweese. Last week's winner at the Brickyard as well. Can he sweep the road course here this season? Wesley, he sits fifth on the speed charts at this moment. So you see the drivers in blue on the scoring ticker as this is about to wrap up. Those are the drivers that are fighting for the championship. They are in the playoffs. The drivers in red are in the LSR TV Best of the Rest Challenge. Those drivers also running for a little championship amongst themselves, accumulating points for the four-race series. One driver in blue will lock up the championship. One driver in red will be the best of the rest, Greg. So we have two different points battles to watch tonight with the championship and the best of the rest. And like you mentioned there, blue is the championship. Those are the guys going for the championship. The red, that's the LSR TV best of the rest, like you mentioned. So two very different points battles here to keep an eye on. And it's going to be a lot of fun trying to keep them separated because you see a couple of drivers in red that are leaning near the top of the ticket right now. And I think a guy that we're going to have to keep an eye on is the guy sitting in fourth right now, Tyler Stukesbury for high five racing missed the playoffs but he has been very very well or done very well on the road courses here not just this season but in seasons past Tyler Stukesbury has been a threat on the road courses fourth right now on the charts watch for him to make a run tonight we're ready to go here at the iRacing uh, track that is Watkins Glen International so the the tell of the tape if you will a great plethora of talent that have an opportunity to race for the championship. By the way, our playoff coverage and instant replay will be presented by Tune In Like uh, Tight In Loose Off. Tight In Loose Off is a YouTube channel covering a wide range of NASCAR related topics and the best presentation possible. New episodes every single Monday. Currently, you can sign up on his YouTube channel or diecast or equal of lesser value once the channel hits 3,000 subs a winner at random will be selected again every monday the podcast for nascar and motorsport tied in and loose off so greg we have braxton deweese the number one seed three wins this year he also won the all-star race at charlotte nine points say four. Spencer Hardison with three wins in the number nine. Those are the drivers that have been the continuous winners of the series and from third on back they've all got at least one win to their credit. Six wins between Deweese and Hardison. They're sitting second and fourth now on the charts as Deweese has jumped to second. But those were the two drivers that dominated the regular season. But here's the thing, Wesley. Deweese's wins came on very, very different styles of racetrack. He won at the road course. He won at Indianapolis. And I believe his other win was Charlotte. So Deweese has won on very different styles of racetracks. Hardison, all three of his wins were on mile and a half racetracks. So this is going to be interesting watching them go at it as the one and two seed. But you cannot count out the guys like Joshua Altus, the Daytona winner, Ross Tatum winner at Martinsville. So many drivers that you cannot count out at all here this evening. Going to be a very, very fun playoffs. And they will fight for the championship. 
championship. And again, uh, you think of a driver like Matthew Gilliams, uh, that's a wild card in the number nine seed. But we have seen the opportunity for drivers to jump up there and go stretch in playoff competition. Watkins Glen International storylines and notables as we head into this event qualifying is coming soon. Race number one of four in the playoffs. Four unique and totally different racetracks. Again, Watkins Glen tonight, Talladega. Then we take a week off and then we come back for a two-week stretch to the side. The champion from the world's fastest half mile, Bristol to No Limits, Texas for the championship. A lot of opportunities, a lot of great racing, and a lot of unique racetracks we will get ready to see here in a few moments, Greg. Going to be very, very fun to watch this playoff battle unfold here. And qualifying just getting underway. And I'm noticing a playoff driver is not here. And it's a driver that has been very fast all weekend long as Keenan Massey misses the bus stop in the number four. He's in the best of the rest here for LSR TV for High Five Racing. But Tucker Wingo not in the field here tonight for this race. So that's going to make things very interesting in the playoffs. Kind of interesting that Kerwingo is not there. Remember, he's one of those drivers that kind of tried to uh, – no, I'm sorry, that was Evan Coleman last week that was actually able to roll the dice and pull off that wild card to advance into the playoffs after round number 12. Last week at Indianapolis, he did not show up to race. He actually spotted to help out another driver. There's a two in tight in loose off entry Toyota for high five. Tyler Stukesbury, and we'll see what he does on the clock. And let's be honest here, Greg, Watkins Glen, a road course. Let's probably suffice to say, set ourselves up for a non-yellow flag race. We will probably see green flag the entire way to the race tonight. That's what we're planning on here in the announcer's tower. We're planning on a caution-free race and just local yellows throughout the course of the day as drivers beginning their first of two qualifying laps. Hopefully, we're able to click them away quickly and get set for this 45-lap race. 45 laps sounds like a sprint, but at a road course, it's going to take a little bit of time. So we're looking forward to seeing what these guys have up their sleeves tonight. To be a good one as qualifying is on track right now. We look at Tyler Stukesbury, the Lone Wolf, and the 19 Toyota down the race uh, down the racetrack here. Eight turns at Watkins Glen. They're working their way into the bus stop, if you will. And going around is Stukesbury going around to the bus stop. What you call the uh, end of the boot around Watkins Glen there. That's going to mess up his first lap, and he's only going to get one shot at a lap here. Two drivers have taken time thus far. Ross Tatum on top in the number one Monster Energy Shadow Racing entry. Chevy Camaro, Martinsville winner. He's on top at a minute 13 with Keenan Massey behind him. Also a minute 13.6 to Tatum's 13.4 as drivers are now beginning to cycle in on their first lap, and they're all still chasing Tatum. Sherwood, Grant, Packard, and Peterson have posted the time thus far. Watkins Glen again. This is, if I remember correctly, is this the the eight turn track? Because uh, yes. we're not driving the boots. This is the eight turn part of the racetrack? Yes. So eight turns around this racetrack here. Watkins Glen is also known for eleven turns. If you run the boot, the toe, and the heel of the racetrack. Normally they do that for Formula One or Indy cars, but this track is an eight track turn here at Watkins Glen. And uh, real quickly, we'll introduce to you the racetrack in a moment as we do see a driver coming down the front straightaway. Crashing is Ross Tatum, the boss, 113.471 on his lap. And we're gonna try to see, Greg, if we can find driver making their way around Watkins Glen, and we'll do a full lap around the racetrack. But we got to get him off of off that corner to get him for a full ladder. Well, Joshua Altis is coming up to speed right now in the bus stop for his warm-up lap. So I think that's going to be our best shot right now is going to be that number 94 of Altis as he is coming out of the bus stop right now. There he is in the number 94 coming to take the green flag right now. All right, let's find him now. This is, again, Joshua Alts. Here he comes down the straightaway. 
He's working his way down with called the West Tunnel of the Speedway, where the egg of the boot and the heel is. But again, that is not part of this racetrack. This track is eight turns instead of 11. He'll work his way in what would be now turn number seven and eight, turn 10 and 11 on the original course. And here he comes down the front straight away. All right. All right, let's ride on board with him now. From above, presented by All-American Pools. You see him go by the start-finish line. He'll make his way to turn number one. That's called the tailgate zone. A lot of people will get on the binders to avoid the speed trap over there. They'll work their way into turn number two through what is known as the S's of the racetrack. That's what he is now negotiating around the east tunnel of the speedway, part of three and four. Down into the S's. He'll work his way down that long back stretch, if you will. And then he'll come to what they call the bus stop, the chicane. There he goes into the bus stop in the chicane. That's into turn number five and six. Work your way around there. Into turn number six. You would then pass by what would be to the bottom right, the entrance to the boot. On the west end of the speedway. However, they'll go to the tunnel turn to the west tunnel. That's turn number seven, Greg. Here he comes down the straightaway to turn number eight. And in one more corner, there you have it. Off of turn number eight to the pit lane entrance. A little bit further to the start finish line at the pedestrian bridge. And that's a lap around Watkins Glen. So that's going to be what these guys have to do 45 times here tonight. Altus's lap, by the way, was good enough for fifth quick at a minute 13.064. Braxton DeWeese and Spencer Hardison, the drivers, with six wins between them. They sit 1-2 on the charts right now before you find Stukesbury and Grant. So High Five Racing currently holding three of the top four spots with CEM's Spencer Hardison breaking up the party up there. Good runs so, for them. Only two cars have not taken the time, those being Cody Terry and Matt Dyer. Dyer on track right now. Did not get a time on his first lap. He's beginning lap number two now in turn number one. So Dyer must have gone off track. There he is in the number 88 Ford. And he's looking for some redemption. He wants the Sell Star TV Best of the Rest award after coming up so close in the playoff hunt last week. And Greg, is it only suffice fitting to say that Cindewis is the number one man right now? The fast man in the car number 15. He was fast on the road course at Daytona. Last time the series ran on the road course, visited Victory Lane for his first win of the season, and it wasn't uh, wasn't exactly a nail-biter for Deweese. He had a dominating performance that night, so he's no doubt looking to back it up here at Watkins Glen. It looks like he's off to a very smooth start. A very smooth start. Deed is qualifying there from California. His Mustang. We'll see what he can do here. In turn number seven, eight. Working his way back around to the eighth turn. To the start finish line. See where Dyer can end up. Ember drivers in blue are the drivers that are fighting for the championship playoff. Everyone else in red in the LSR TV Best of the Rest Challenge. And Matt Dyer will clock in 10th at a 113.837 second lap. Cody Terry, the other driver that looks like will not take time. So that will set the field with Jackson DeWeese being the fast qualifier for round number one of the Pops in season two. We'll step away for a quick break. Driver starting lineups presented by CompServe Wireless is next. This is the SMB Cup Series on LSR TV. The playoffs on your home for sim racing from Watkins Glen. Deadly Dust from Bing and J Long Range Attractions. Deadly Dust is a true hybrid sweet corn. Over 50% sweet corn. Deadly Dust has a very powerful aroma and a sweet, sweet taste of whitetails love and crave. Add Deadly Dust to your field corn or use it on its own. But ultimately, Deadly Dust will increase your success rate in the woods. Deadly Dust from Biggie Day Long Range Track. ETE Reman is the world's best remanufacturer of transmissions for import and domestic cars and trucks. Based in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, our customers are repair shops, auto parts stores, dealerships, and distributors. 
And with six nationwide warehouses, we're where and when you need us. So when you're looking for a transmission that is like new, only better, instill confidence and install ETE Remax. Back here at Watkins Glen, the S's, the backstretch, the inner loop, the bus stop, the shoot, the big heel. All of those are coming up as the analogies used in our broadcast. Here's the starting lineup for the playoffs for the S&B Cup Series at Watkins Glen. Braxton DeWeese, fast qualifier on the pole in the 15. Spencer Hardison, row number one to the outside of the nine. Row two will find Tyler Stooksbury in the 19 and Jacob Grant in car number 52. Rolling off in the fifth position is going to be Daytona winner Joshua Altus in the number 94 with Caleb Smith, Dover winner on his outside in the sixth position. Rolling off in the number seven position will be the number one, the Martinsville winner Ross Tatum with Christian Gardner in the number seven back after missing a couple of weeks. In the Matt five. Dyer ran up. Oh, sorry, Leslie. Row number five will find Ken Massey in the four. Part of the outside, Matt Dyer in the 88. Row six in the field will find the drivers of Matthew Gilliams in 28 and Rob Sherwood in the 29 machine. Rounding out the field here for this one is going to be Brockton Packard for Shadow Racing in the number 24 with Jack Ely to his outside for Babs Racing. His teammate and playoff driver, Tucker Ringo, not here tonight. Zach Peterson and Evan Coleman going to be 16th and 17th. Cody Terry did not post a qualifying lap. Takes a provisional. He will start 17th shotgun on the field. So there's the starting lineup. It's presented by Conserve Wireless with 24 locations in three states, including Virginia, Maryland, and Pennsylvania. For all of your Verizon Wireless needs and Verizon Fios needs, let Comserve Wireless take care of you. They are at ComserveWireless.com. So, Greg, we mentioned all of these analogies, these expressions that will be used in this race. We anticipate no yellow flags. It should be a green flag stretch, 45 laps. And it's very unique that the road course is the opening race in the playoffs. A lot of wild cards here tonight. Yeah, very unique that there's even a road course in the playoffs. A lot of series have been going away from that here, but... Very good to see it here tonight as the playoff opener. And you know Braxton DeWeese is happy about that. He won the Daytona road course earlier. No doubt he's looking to build some momentum towards a championship push. Because remember, this is not like your standard run-of-the-mill playoffs you see nowadays. No, this is like the old-school chase format where it's just four races and whoever has accumulated the most points at the end is the champion. 45 laps the distance for the drivers of the SMB Cup Series here tonight at Watkins Glen. You're riding on board with the rear end of the car that's on the pole. That is Braxton DeWeese looking for his fourth win in the series. Five overall if you count the all-star race win at Charlotte and proverbially, proverbially the number one wild card. Uh, the bullseye is on the chest of the driver in that 15 of Braxton DeWeese for everybody gunning at him. Here they come. You see one of the officials of iRacing looking on. The pace car, a very unique, different-looking pace car, a Porsche pace car, leads the field into turn number eight. Down into the straightaway, the pace car will drop onto pit road and make a right-hand turn instead of a left-hand turn. Green is in the air. We're underway at Watkins Glen. The playoffs, the quest for a champion is underway, and they dive into turn number one. Hardison will get the jump on the whole shot. 
Hardison able to clear Deweese on the initial start. Gets out in front. Watch out for Hardison because we know when Hardison gets up front, it is very difficult to get back around him because he has so much speed in that number nine car. But watch the teammates now as Deweese, Stukesbury, and Grant have all found each other right off the get-go here. Keep an eye on them to try to get some momentum going. There ways we approach 40. the bus stop for the first time. The bus stop, here they come into the bus stop. The chicane, if you want to call it that. Working their way through there. Now they're going to make their way into the turn number five and six. This is where the entrance of the boot would be, but we're not running on the boot. It's right there. Though every day we'll bypass that and stay on the west end tunnel of the speedway. There is a tunnel turn or a tunnel down the straightaway where they would cross over right here. This is coming to the end of the boot. And there you see it right there, working their way now off of turn number eight, around, and Greg, lap one in. It's Hardison, DeWeese, Stukesbury, Grant Smith, the top five. Everybody is single file on lap one. Everyone being patient. They know road course is a very tricky subject. Very difficult to get a, a good run going here if you don't know a whole lot about road course. A lot of these drivers, clearly they're in a cup car series. The primary run of the Mill Cup race is on an oval. This is not too common. I mean, yes, there's six on the schedule for 2021 for the big boys this year, but you don't see road course racing very often in full-size cup cars. So this is something you don't get to see very often. So a lot of guys don't really spend a lot of time on the road course looking forward to seeing what they've got here tonight as Deweese is coming up and taking a shot maybe at Hardison thinking he wants to lead this race he was trying to make a move there on Hardison better of it back the way there you see him on the driver left if you will down the straightaway west end of the speedway where the boot is and now they go to the boot exit to their way to turn number seven around to turn number eight right there and coming back around to the start finish line opening laps underway and is now the man out in front of the number nine machine deweese right there within a cat's whisker behind him they'll work their way back down into turn at number one want to avoid that gravel trap there because that's where you can lose a lot of momentum everybody negotiates it perfectly they'll work their way back up now Coming to turn number one and two through the S's of the racetrack, if you call it that. And then they'll make their way to the long straightaway, which would be preferredly known as the backstretch here at Watkins Glen. Powering their way uphill, Greg. And then they'll slower down and make their way to the chicane, the bus stop, the inner loop into that corner in four and five. And this is going to be one of the best passing spots of oh, the night, the passing offers. zone. We got trouble. And he's got to stop. Remember, remember, if you miss your mark, you've got to stop. If not, you'll suffer a penalty. And that's what Deweese had to do. And, Craig, we actually see that in real NASCAR road course competition as well if you miss that inner loop. Take a look Let's at the first look. ever tight end loose off replay here on LSR TV. See what happened with Deweese as he missed the breaking zone here. This is coming off of turn number four. So he Up will the straightaway. his run. Up the straightaway, and you just watch him where he just made that error. Car got finished, and then he just bypassed everything. But notice, Greg, he had to stop because if he had not stopped when he came back around, he would have suffered an EOL penalty. And the good or news he would have had to come to the pits. Good news for Luis, though, is he is one of the fastest cars here this weekend, and he only fell back to sixth. He gave up six seconds, but he has been very strong all week long here and in the number 15 so he might have a shot he might have a shot to hit a nice recovery here ross tatum in the number one also having issues and you know greg we say this several times in in, in playoff coverage on ll starts tv for so many series you definitely do not want to make mistakes here especially running for a championship here's another tight end loose off instant replay and we will show you what happened now to Jack Ely in number the 54. 54. Jack Ely, and we'll see what happened to him. Watch this. Going off in the turn, number one. Zach Peterson behind him. Oh, someone just blinked in right there. I believe that was Cody Terry. And Ely just slides there off of turn number one. Get off everything, but that's going to cost him a lot of time on the racetrack. But you got to notice, remember, if this was a round track, there would probably be a caution flag. No caution for this so far. No yellow flags. We effort. 
probably seeing no cautions whatsoever. You just don't see it in road course racing. This could probably be a 45 lap green flag run from start to finish. We are currently now working their way into five in of 45. Working lap, lap number six. They come down one bouncing off the wall there. That was Gardner. And that green number seven, he's in the eighth. He's going to have some company from Evan Coleman to pass him on driver right to the inside. Coleman able to get by going into that bus stop. One of the big passing zones here at this racetrack. Coleman able to gain a spot. He's up seven positions already, Wesley, in that number 51, the Rowdy Energy Toyota. Evan Coleman up seven spots. He's the biggest mover of the day thus far. Watching him as he comes back down. Down the straightaway here, off the west end of the speedway. Tunnel, well, there is a little turn in the straightaway of that track right where the end of the boot is. And here they work their way cycling off of turn number eight, back down the straightaway. Greg, what are we thinking fuel-wise? Uh, less than 15 laps or so, tires and fuel coming in, 15, 15 to 17 laps is what we're thinking for a pit window. Yeah, 15 to 17 laps again. Remember, they're on 50% fuel capacity. Three sets of tires on pit road, plus the four er, tires that they started on. So four sets of tires in this race here tonight. On 50% fuel capacity, that is going to probably equate to a stop every 15 to 17 laps. That means a probably fuel strategy and staving your tires will definitely become a premium as we move down to the stretch, especially since we are not thinking a caution flag will be waved here. The drivers are just going to, you're going to see some guys trying the different strategies with that. I mean, obviously Spencer Hardison has made his strategy clear. Go, 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 go as much as he can, much like his races at Homestead and other tracks that he dominated on throughout the season. Evan Coleman just picked up another spot, Wesley. He is now up to seventh as he gets around his teammate Matt Dyer. So, Evan Coleman hard charging right now. We might see Coleman make some noise before this race is over. The CEM Motorsports number 51 working his way down the straightaway. Rowdy energy drink. By the way, I'm a fan of the green apple. I like green apple. Cherry limeade's pretty good, too. Haven't gotten the that out to Kyle Busch and Shout out to Kyle Bush and his rowdy energy drinks. Hardison's opened it up three and a half seconds over second place driver Jacob Grant in the number 52. Driver who's in the best of the rest running right now, but is trying to get a win here and set himself up for a run for that best of the rest. But he's under pressure right now from Caleb Smith in the number 12 for that second spot. Pillsbury and Smith going at it here down what would be the backstretch. And don't look now because Josh Altus in the Vortex Optics Chevy is peaking low. And looks like he's going to try to split the middle. He thought three wide. Whoa. Back up. Thought about going three wide road style. Daytona winner Joshua Altus riding on board with him now in the fourth position. Trying to close in on Grant. Down to the Artisan. outside. Artisan opened He's it up another run. second that lap. Dukesbury right behind him. Ready to pounce Wies. as well. Wies has reeled this group in. Yes, sir, he has. Trying to find his way around. First, his teammate, Tyler Stukesbury, in the number 19. So, Deweese, a nice recovery early, but he knows he's got to get by, past these guys quickly if he wants to have a shot to go after the CEM boys up front, being Hardison and Smith. Deweese has to make his move quickly. And there's another CEM car he has to worry about creeping up in his mirror. Evan Coleman is bringing Matt Dyer with him right now. They are beginning to close in on this as well. Matt Dyer, one of those drivers in the 88 machine currently right now on track in eighth position we'll show him oh many times greg to winning a race on the snb cup series to advance into the playoffs and just coming up shy but he has the fight for the lsr tv best of the rest challenge fighting it out trying to get some momentum going for that number 88 camp it was so close to charlotte leading at the white flag had so much of a 
for such a good run in that number 88. We have one driver out of the race. It is a playoff driver. Jack Ely in the number wow. 54 has parked it. After the spin earlier, it looks like he's just going to say, you know what, I'm just going to cut my losses and take another shot at it next week. A tough break for Jack Lee. And now let's let's talk about this playoff run here as we're about to put 10 laps on the board, 35 remaining. Watkins Glen, round number one of the playoffs of a four-race series. And, we, we, you know, we, we emphasize, we talk about Watkins Glen tonight. Talladega Super Speedway Racing next Wednesday night. Then you take a week off. Then you go to Bristol, the half-mile world's fastest short track. And then Texas Motor Speedway, uh, which is always a unique double dog leg, mile and a half. Four unique racetracks, four different racing configurations, Greg. And in addition to that, uh, there is no process of elimination. There is no, uh, you know, 10, 12 drivers becoming the round of six or the round of championship four, the round of eight. This basically is a four race championship playoff series tallied up at season's end. The winner with the most points accumulated will be the playoff series champion. Much like the old school chase format, the original chase format, but just four races instead of ten. Dewey cracks the top five. He gets around his teammate, Jacob Grant, now sets his sights on his other teammate, Tyler Stukesbury. He just got passed by Altus. He's trying to get up there. Dewey's. 15 creeping and then Coleman taking a peek inside of Grant as well Coleman's still the biggest mover of this race he's now up nine spots from 16th to 7th and is going after the 52 of Grant for sixth right now he's got the preferred line here through the swooping carousel turn down the back stretch you may have a shot when they come through the final right hander if he can keep with Grant on the inside no he's going to back off and cross over he wants to make the pass now in the 51 to the outside, back to the inside. That is the 52 in front of him of Grant, Pillsbury. Coleman at 51. Remember, Coleman decided last week at Indianapolis not to run the finale. He helped spot for one of the drivers on his team. And it was a gamble. It paid off, Greg, and he was able to advance into the playoffs. Right now, he's got a good run going for him in the top 10 and 7th, but there is the driver in the top 5 right now. Braxton DeWeese closing in on Tyler Stukesbury, the tight end loose off podcast Toyota. And as they work their way through the inner loop, the bus stop, off of the corner into turn 4 and 5, and around, Altus there, Dukesbury, DeWeese. Good racing in the opening uh, 10 laps here at the Glen. Yeah, they're already 10 in of 45, so coming around to complete lap number 11, DeWeese has gotten back up to fourth and is trying to reel in the number 94 of Altus, but work to do, and Hardison's lead, by the way, Wesley, is beginning to shrink. Caleb Smith is closing in here on his teammate in the number 99. It was 3.3 seconds last time by, now down to 2.7 seconds. So Caleb Smith, one of the fastest cars on the racetrack right now, trying to reel in his teammate. He got the win at Dover in the 12. He wants to get up there and get himself a win here to start the playoffs off. You can see Hardison getting bigger and bigger in his windshield. This track, 4.6 miles, 7.4 kilometers in distance. And again, as we mentioned, this track also has 11 turns if you count the boot being used. But however, the boot not used here tonight. Braxton DeWeese is up to third, Wesley. He now has gotten around Altus and is setting his sights on the CEM teammates of Hardison and Smith. 
But Braxton Deweys, after that early slip up, has fought back into third place. But now he's really got his work cut out for him because he's got to put his head down and try to reel in Smith and Hardison. It looks like Hardison has been able to find some of that form once again as he might be able to open up the lead a little bit more. We'll see what it is this time. 2.7 at the line last time. A tenth quicker, 2.8 that time. Deweys, though, able to shave a half a second off that. And Hardison flagged the flag so far. Quick break as we close in on stops. 13 of 45. The playoffs. Round one underway at the Glen. Here's a look at your saw. Well, we got Matt Dyer to the pit lane. And he has overshot he has his overshot. stall big time, Greg. And he, then he overshot it back and up. Finally slides in. So that's going to cost him quite a bit of time in the number 88. So here we go. Pit stops underway. Dyer pinning a little bit early. About two to four laps before we started to expect drivers on pit road. So Dyer doing a little bit of a short pit now. Coming off the racetrack to get going. And the good news is this racetrack is so big. Even with the slip up, Dyer's in no danger whatsoever of going a lap down. As Hardison isn't even coming through the final turn yet. And Dyer's already back on the racetrack. And honestly, whenever it cycles back around for Dyer to come back on the racetrack, because we got Gardner going around the team real tree, number seven, Cody Gardner going around in the seven car. Here's a look at your tight end loose off in replay. We'll find out what happened in the seven. Just snapped loose in the bus stop, Wesley. Here's a look at the replay. Watch this. He's going to come up the hill. Watch what happens as he's coming out of the bus stop. Here he is coming down, slow earner. Coming to the bus stop, and then watch right here. This little right-hander right here just snaps oh, on him right there. Oh, he just shot it. Yeah, just shot it, fishtailed the car, and lost it over correct. And around he went for a double spin. Tyler Stukesberry coming down pit road, and then the number 19, he's just now rolling off in the tight end loose off Toyota. It's from the top five. And again, we talked about it in the pre-race, Wesley. I was expecting a good run out of Stukesbury with the amount of road course that he does here in these full-body stock cars. You don't see a whole lot of it here on the iRacing server, but Tyler Stukesbury, one of the best ones here in the NASCAR Cup cars on the road course, kind of the road course ringer, if you will, keeping your eyes on him moving forward. That's right. And here they come back across the start finish line, your leader. Weiss has gotten around Smith. I think, yes, something he has. Happened, I think something happened to Smith because DeWeiss was a little bit further back at the line the last time, and now he has gotten around second. We're hearing that we have Coleman on pit road trying to see if we can figure out what happened with Smith. Ross Tatum on as well. Artisan, the leader. Here comes Ross Tatum. Remember, he had problems in qualifying earlier. And he still is on the pit lane with other cars, including Ross Tatum, Evan Coleman. Greg Peterson of the 96 is also on pit lane. 16 cars started this race. Uh, excuse me, 17. Jack Ely, the first retiree of the event. There is the 24 machine. Brockton Packard. Good smooth night for Team 24. Greg, he's currently in the top 10 in ninth. Yeah, big night for Brockton Packard out of Shadow Racing. Needs a good run in that number 24 car to get himself some momentum. He's also in the hunt for that best of the rest category, and he's doing a nice job keeping it clean. And right now, he's just out there trying to do a, or get some laps. Is your leader coming down? Spencer Hardison coming down. Altus no, coming behind in him. as well. Nope, that's Altus. Altus. He stays that's out right. to do the lap. That's right. Do we still go back to the lead? Here comes Hardison. Here comes Joshua Altus on pit road. The Lanes Construct Incorporated number nine. The pit stall box number two. Altus right behind him in pit stall box number four. And four tires and fuel at half capacity for the drivers of these cars. 16 of 45 in. So... First third of this race 
in the books. Spencer Hardison leading pretty much the entirety of that one before Deweese able to get by on pit strategy, staying out a, lo a lap longer perhaps than Hardison. Remember, we're not expecting these guys to be able to go more than 17 laps on the tank of fuel. We're working lap number 16 right now, so we'll see if Deweese and Smith and company make that right-hander onto pit road this time as they're coming through the last turn. See what Deweese does. He is backing it down in the 15. He's coming to pit road. Smith as well in the number 12. Next up will be Keenan Massey in the number four. Deweese's teammate. He's coming down. Jacob Grant slowing down. He's coming. So that should just about cycle everybody through. Still waiting on a couple uh, random drivers to come down. Rob Sherwood making the right hander now. Next up would be Gilliams. He's coming. So I believe that's just about everybody that is needed to come down pit road. That will cycle the field through as we now await. It looks like Tyler Stukesbury is going to come out as the race leader for the time being. And when all these other cars pit, cycle it back around to Matt Dyer, who took advantage of everyone in the nope. 88. He might nope. be able to Wesley climb back. No, I don't Wesley's think he has. Something happened to Dyer, I believe, because Tyler Stukesbury oh, no. cycled through as the race leader, and Dyer's going to be back around fifth. Stukesbury oh, leading the way with Hardison right behind him, and then you're going to find DeWeese putting pressure on, on a little bit fresher tires. So right now, I think it's advantage 15 car. As he stayed out the extra lap over Hardison, who stayed out the extra lap over Stukesbury. So Stukesbury leading the way right now, but Luis right there in that 15, I think he's the strongest car right now with those pressure tires until at least they yeah. fall off. Yeah, that's a tough break there. Matt Dyer trying to take a gamble and try to get up there and do something to get to the lead, but right now just not paying off. It's Hardison now moving his way back to round Stukesbury or trying to the battle for the lead right there. He's going to have the advantage. Three. He's going to have the advantage coming through that right hander. Stukesbury might be able to fight back on the inside, but coming up on this last turn of this course right here, this is Hardison's pass right here. He's got him. Back to, Hardison, the, lead. Back to the lead. Nine, a Hardison. Cross the line this time by. There they are, the top three. Hardison, Stukesbury, Dewey, Smith, and Altus, your top five. Presented by Sawblade.com. Now we will take a break. We'll come back with more from the Glen. The SB Cup Series playoffs on your home for Sim Racing, LSR TV. We're based out of West Monroe, Louisiana. Uh, we do custom t-shirts, racing. We'll do any, actually any shirt. We'll do uh, schools, churches, fundraisers. We do a ton of event shirts. Uh, as you can see on our board here, uh, all around our uh, banner, personalized. I mean, it, we'll do anything. It doesn't matter to us. We got the custom rugs. Um, we use all the, you know, top quality shirts, you know, inks and everything, uh, hoodies, um, hats. We do embroidered hats. Uh, embroidered shirts, um, you know, just you can call us for anything. Uh, we do offer the bag and fold uh, to where we, you know, you can receive them and they're already labeled and tagged and bagged, uh, ready to give out to your customers. So, so like you just call us and just tell us, hey, this is what we're looking at doing. And um, if we're going to put the car on there, it is 125 quantity minimum. Uh, if it's without the car, it's 60 quantity minimum. That's strictly on the racing stuff. Um, if it's a business or something, if you just race on Texas shirts, you know, it's a little bit different. At least. Uh, um, you know, you can call us. It just depends on your quantity and ink colors. Everything is hand drawn. I mean, everything. We don't Photoshop anything onto it, onto a shirt or anything like that. Everything that we we go through, everything is drawn, and which is the reason for the uh, art fees. Because uh, we do have several graphic artists that draw for us, and um, you know they're really good. So. Yeah. so what we do is is on any any package that you do, we can we can mix and match. We can do any colors. You can do purple, red, blue, green, and do the rest black it doesn't matter to us uh, with your design on there we can do hoodies we can do hoodies long sleeve shirts t-shirts tank tops um, it doesn't matter I mean just it's, it's almost limitless what you can do and you can put all that together in that package to make that minimum you know requirements they can call us 318-278-7191 um, or they can email us at bulletprooftees uh, at yahoo.com or they can go to the website bulletprooftees.com Pressure for the lead building between Hardison, Deweese, Stukesbury, your top three. 
Welcome back to our coverage on LSR TV. Round number one of the playoffs in season two of the SB Cup Series presented by Appalachian Hauler Hunters. Greg Rance, Wesley Outland, Charles Wooten on the production. And this battle continues for the lead going into the S's. Braxton Deweese, remember, he had that slip up early in the race, right around lap three or so. He has fought his way back, and now he's got one lap fresher tires than Hardison and the fastest car on the racetrack. With a little bit of lap traffic ahead of him, Deweese might be able to make this pass for the lead and get his first official run as the race leader. And Gilliams, or no, that's Cody Terry in the 22, is just going to say, nope, I'm just going to come to a stop right there and let the leaders go. I'll take the penalty because I don't want to mess up anything for these playoff drivers drivers here. Cody Terry in 22 with another error. We saw DeWeese make that mistake at the beginning of the race, but now he's right there in the crosshairs of the leader of the nine of Hardison. Hardison and DeWeese now pulling away from everyone else. Smith, the blue car in the back with the yellow number. You see him just to the upper right of your monitor right there. And well, that goes on, this little cat and mouse, Monty Wimano continues between Hardison, DeWeese. There's Smith. Back across the line, 20 laps, seeing 25 to go, Greg, back one. And Deweese took a peek to the inside here. Wesley, are you at all surprised to see this being what starts the playoffs off? A battle between the two drivers who tied for the most wins on the season, Hardison and Deweese, each with three victories this season. Hardison winning on the mile and a half tracks at Kansas, Chicago, and Homestead. While Deweese picking up wins at Charlotte and then the Daytona Road Course and the Brickyard Indianapolis as we're on board right now with Braxton Deweese in the number 15. Here you see him putting the pressure on and boy, Deweese is giving it all he's got. He knows he's got one lap pressure tires than Hardison and he wants to keep that advantage going because they're only about 9 to 11 laps away from pitting again. And you know something else, Greg? As we watched them work their way to the bus stop on the straightaway on the backside. Artisan, DeWeese, Oh, one car off in the gravel right in front of him. Zach Peterson went off in the gravel right in front of the leaders. And he is still wow, very slowly coming out. He's going to be able to keep it off everybody. But, wow, that could have been a hair raiser there for the 96 of Peterson. We're going to take a look at the tight end or tight end loose off replay. Watch the 96 car. That, that, that's the Zachary Peterson entry. Come to the carousel. Way. Come to the carousel. This is going into this left-hander right here. There you see the leaders right back there. This is the 96 of Peterson. Something happened in this corner right here. Let's see what it was. Goes Looks off. like he just overshot just, corner yeah. and broke loose. And then right there when you get in the gravel, that's where the car becomes almost impossible to control. I'm amazed he was able to keep it off the tire barrier there. A good save for him on that change there. Deweese. Luis has gotten around See him all. We got another one off the smack. Dyer in trouble in 88. Second time that tonight. Dyer in trouble. Deweese has gotten around Hardison, so a bad couple of moments there for CEM as Dyer has issues on track and Deweese able to get by Hardison for the race lead. Braxton Deweese. Back to what I was now. saying, Greg. Back to what I was saying before we had all that craziness going on. Deweese, Hardison, Dukesbury, drivers that I remembered from the Adrenaline Eye Racing League that used to run on Sundays on LSR TV. And, and they struggled. They always got caught up in accidents. Maybe they made some dirty moves, had penalties, got, you know, suspensions and whatnot. Since they've come on board and they've ran this s &B series, we have really seen these drivers own their talent, virtual eye racing skills, and we've really seen the best of them coming out. Yeah, it has really been fun watching these guys. We get to see them here on two different series here on LSR TV, and we're still waiting on details. We got to put together the details for the new toy coming to LSR TV in 2021, but it's my understanding that with the new Upper Edge series that's coming out, we are going to see some of these guys, including this guy right now on screen, Caleb Smith. I know he's already filed an entry for the new Upper Edge series and right or multiple series of Upper Edge when it comes out. But I know Caleb Smith has filed an entry for at least one of those. So I'm very much looking forward to that. Yeah, Upper Edge Racing, uh, a new entity, a part of LSR TV. Got bought out uh, right where the end of 2020, and there is a lot of big plans for it in 2021. 
23 of 45. Approaching halfway here. Zach Peterson has loaded it up on the hauler and called it a night. Second driver out of the race. 15 drivers remain. Started this race with 17. Taking the green flag here tonight at Watkins Glen. There's Matt Dyer. Working his way through the S's. Back around. And I understand he just made a just came off pit road as well just a moment ago. The 88 machine works his way to the bus stop or the chicane, if you will. Back around through the carousel. They'll move to the entrance of where the is. That's Matt Dyer watching the 88 car. He's currently right now a lap down in 13th. If we were to get a caution, Greg. Highly unlikely for ropes racing, he would be the car to get the free path. Well, there's a 50% chance of a 100% chance that that's not going to happen. Uh, did right. I do my math correctly <laughs> there? Dyer's coming down pit road again in the number 88, so he's coming down pit road for a third time here in the number 88. We'll see what the call is here. And the fact that he was just on pit road tells me that he's not Maybe happy. A uh, either a penalty or could be we'll see he's coming down pit road just now getting to the pit stalls no he's pulling into his pit stall see if it's a stop and go or what we got ancient tires pit stop that tires going on so dyer thinking you know what might as well give it a shot i got just over 30 laps to go i can go on one more stop remember that's a second set of tires and he might have gotten the penalty and just said, you know what, I'm going to take tires anyway. I think you can. Yeah. He's leading the way. Hardison, Smith, Altus for top four right now. And probably in about uh, five laps or so or less, we'll see them. Come back down to the pit lane and take on their second round of green flag pit stops. But we still the man out in front. There you see him right there. Closing in on back traffic. Artisan in second, Smith third, Altus fourth, Coleman top five. All five drivers in the playoffs right now in the top five on the track. Well, lap traffic ahead of the 15 of Deweese. It's Brockton Packard in the number 24. And I'm looking at the 24. He looks like he's got pretty significant damage on the back of that number 24 car. Yes, he, he took a shot in the shorts from somebody because the back end of that number 24 is crumpled up pretty significantly here. And now the quest begins as the 15 goes by to see if we can find a car with a lot of front end damage. And I Remington believe, I, the believe I may have found the culprit. I believe it's Rob Sherwood in the 29. Looks like he's got the nose of that number 29 car scuffed up pretty good, if I'm seeing things correctly right now. Understanding per the rules of the event, uh, will not throw a caution unless a car is wrecked on track and stopped or a multi-car pile up. That's the, the only way the caution will come Tatum? out. What in the world does happen to Ross Tatum there in the number one? You see him on the straightaway breaking all kinds of loose. That was Dukesbury on pit road in the number 19 for his second stop. Tied in loose off Camry. Coming to the pits. Pit stall number two for Taylor Stukesbury. <laughs> Tires in half fuel capacity on the engine. Another entry of Tyler Stukesbury as he will take a gamble and get before anybody else does. Right now, he'll stay in the 10 as he exits backtrack. 
Actually, Luis is opening it up three and a half seconds and gaining more and more and more each lap. Caleb Smith has gotten around Hardison for a second, but Deweese is gone, Wesley, in that number 15. So this is beginning to shape up a lot like the Daytona Road Course earlier in the season for Deweese yeah. in the number 15. Yeah, we saw that little mistake that was made by Deweese on the opening laps, and then after that, he was able to fall back to sixth. Valley battled and rallied his way back, back to the lead. Even during an exchange of stops, he was able to still run down Hardison and Smith and Stukesbury, for that matter, to get around and go for the lead. And there you see the 15 Toyota, very strong. Working his way down the straightaway back stretch. They call it here at the Glen. He'll make way God. into the bus stop. He's got almost that entire backstretch between himself and Caleb Smith right now. But Smith able to shave some of that off through the bus stop. And now Deweese back on the throttle through the carousel. So this is going to be interesting to see now. I think if you're in the CEM camp of Smith and Hardison right now, and even Altus in the number 94 is lurking back there in fourth, but a ways back, I think you got to try to beat Deweese on pit road. I think that's your only shot at, at the rate Deweese is going right now. You're noticing that uh, within any time frame now, we're going to start seeing more green flag pit stops. As they'll come to the line, this and by, it'll be lap number 28 complete, working lap 29. 29 of 45. As Deweese is still the man out in front. There is Smith. You just saw a little glimpse of him there in the blue and yellow, white number 12, right there. As Luis worked his way through the S's. Interval now almost five and a half seconds to Caleb Smith in second. Right, that's how big of a lead Braxton Deweese has over the field in second. He has done a fantastic job ever since getting around the number nine of Hardison to take the lead. Really begin to open it up. No signs of slowing either, but Evan Coleman and Joshua Altus back here, fourth and fifth. Coleman seems to have slowed it down a little bit in the 51 since catching up to Altus, but... Coleman is still up 11 spots, by far the biggest mover of the race thus far. The only driver up double digits right now. The Weiss, the man leading there is Hardison. He's in third. He is trying to close in on Caleb Smith. Comes the rest of the pack now. That's Altus, Coleman, Massey. Dyer's in that mix. He is again two laps down. The 88 machine. We approaching 15 laps to go, Greg. Next time by when they come to the line here at the Glen. You can expect to see these guys on pit road any minute now. As we reach the final third of this race. He's doing Remington a at the Glen job. 1 10. Yes, sir. The Remington at the Glen 1 10. 110 miles, 45 laps. The circuits around the 8 turn Watkins Glen International. And there is Ross Tatum on pit road in the number one machine. Tatum coming down. And he's had kind of a disappointing night, Wesley, in that Monster Energy number one Camaro because he was a guy who a lot of people had pegged as a guy who was going to make some noise here in the playoffs. So to have this kind of a start with a couple of incidents on track, definitely going to be frustrating. And no doubt he'll be looking for a bounce back because there's the leader, Deweese, in the 15. So now right Tatum's got to be careful. We got pit road. Very, very busy place right now. Second, third, fourth, fifth, all on pit road. Second round of green flag stops for Hardison, Altus, Coleman, Massey, all on the pit lane. Four tires and fuel, Rowdy Inter Energy, when you see him right, this Toyota. And notice also for road racing, Greg, that when cars come down to the pit lane, pit stops start on the right side, driver's side of the car, and end on the passenger side of the car. 
on, on the right, normally you'll see them come to the pits and the right side of the car is where they first work and do service. And then they go to the driver's side to finish, but not in road course racing. And it all, all depends, Wesley, on what side of the wall that your car is on. If you're on the left side of the wall like that, then yes, you're going to see the left side tires go on first because they got to go around the car first. This is the only track that the Cup Series goes to that hat features that pit road. As of this year, we still have yet to see what's going to happen at the Indianapolis Road Course, Circuit of the Americas, Road America. I think those three, you're going to see that pit stop similar to this, but this is right now the only track you see it on for the cup cars, but I have a feeling that's going to change here in 2021. That's right. Fifth on pit road in the 12th. Caleb Smith now, the 12 on pit road. He'll give up second position. Right side already done to the left. Our left, your right is what I meant to say. Left, right side done, and he's off. And, to, and Smith back on track right in front of the pack. Hey, how about that? He comes into the pits in second and elects it in fourth, Greg. Huh. Hardison. That shows you just how spread out these guys are and how fast these top three have been. The Hardison was able to get off and on pit road and only lose one spot. Do we on pit road now? That's the Weiss is on pit road. Here comes Braxton Weiss for the second time for his green flag pit stop. I'm in. Down pit make road. sure you don't make any mistakes. No, especially on pit road, and especially if you're DeWeese. You can make it to the end now on this race, so you can effectively make it to the end on fuel, so you just don't want to make any mistakes and save yourself that trouble of having to fight back late because De DeWeese has more than enough fuel now to make it to the end. He only has to go about 12 more laps. No mistakes made for that driver. There's DeWeese back on track. He will enter as the leader. He will exit as the leader. But there's the man behind him. Hardison and Smith, 2.8 seconds, or now, excuse me, three and a half back, four and a half back for Smith. That's still the advantage, as now Rob Sherwood is on pit road in the 29. Braxton DeWeese, sheer domination. He just came down on the pit lane as the leader. He'll exit as the leader. And he still has an interval of almost three and a half. Coleman with trouble. Of Coleman. Coleman, who had such a strong run, a lot of damage on the number 51. Battling with Altus. This was for fourth on the track in the net race. Altus and in Coleman. The in the middle of pit stops, they were battling for fourth before the pit stops began. And oh, whoa! Coleman in the wall. Oh, and then he, he was flips on it lid. one and a half oh, on man. his roof. Oh man, he's gonna come to a stop and he's gonna call the tow truck. No caution. <laughs> I guess the SMB Cup Series officials that that was not a reason to throw a yellow flag, Greg. There you go. 12 laps to go. Final round of commercials, and we'll take you to the checkered flag. And a green flag stretch for the Remington at the Glen 110. Playoff race number one for the SMB Cup Series. Presented by Appalachian Holler Hunters in season two. A look at your sawblade.com top five. Braxton DeWeese ready to bring this one to the home stretch. Punch in his tick and continue to go for champion and looking for in number four. DeWeese, Hardison, Smith, Altus, Stooksbury. Back with more in a moment from LSR TV. Your home for sim racing at the Glen.
Closing Closing stages. in on the finish of this race. Louise Hill with a 2.2 second lead over the CEM teammates of Hardison and Smith and then Altus and Stukesbury, your top five. It's a long ways back to Stukesbury, but the top five all still within seven seconds of each other right now. But boy, Braxton Deweese is laying the hurt on him right now. He laid down an entire second faster than Hardison and Smith that time. Ten laps to go here at Lynn as Deweese is still the man out in front. Artisan in a number spot. Smith is third. Greg, sorry, buddy. I think I'm in some inter in internet interference on my end. It is beginning to snow here in North Carolina, believe it or not. It is snowing in the Tar Heel State like you're used to snow in Washington. It's been snowing since Sunday here in Washington. It started snowing just before the Northwest Tour race, and it's been about two hours on, two hours off, two hours on, two hours off. Ever since then, for about three days now, it's been this way. Yeah, we don't like it. No. We want, we want racing. We want real racing. Deweese leads inside of 10 laps to go, nine to go for Deweese. He's just got to be clean for these last nine laps, and he'll have himself his fourth win of the season to lead the series and kick off the playoffs with a victory. But Caleb Smith might have something to say about that. Something happening oh, over here. That's Brockton Packard. Or no, Number that's 24. Rob Sherwood. Rob, Rob Sherwood. Sherwood, 29, excuse me. Rob Sherwood going around, tied in loose off replay. We'll find out what happened. This was this looked like it was up at the carousel. This is coming off of turn number four, heading to the bus stop. So looks like this was somewhere around the bus stop. For Sherwood in the 29. Here he is entering the bus stop. Doing a little hot the hospital hobble there. Ooh, much like Christian Gardner, but he pounded the tire barrier. No hang time, though, like Cole Holman. No. Tough break for the real tree, number 24. Brockton Packard falling back now to 11th, a lap down. 10 cars on the lead lap. 3.8 seconds, the interval now. 3.9 seconds, DeWeese to Smith. And Braxton DeWeese continuing to stay out in front. There's the 94, Joshua Altus. He currently sits in the fourth position, but he's eight seconds back to the leader with eight to go. Closing stages here at the Glen. For the Remington at the Glen and Braxton DeWeese. Took him a little bit to recover from that slide at the start of the race, but ever since then, he has been very, very strong in that 15 car. Very patient, working his way up to the field and eventually taking the lead away. And since then, he hasn't looked back. But Caleb Smith, he may be giving it all he's got right now, throwing a Hail Mary to try to get back up there to Braxton. A Hail Mary is definitely what you'd have to call it here in the cards. Down the stretch for sure. With eight. Eight laps to go with Deweese still the man out in front. Oh Got no, car tore screen. up. Oh, that's Cody Terry in the 22. I didn't lose off replay. See what happened to Cody Terry now in the 22. Closing stages action beginning to pick up here. Let's watch and see Terry 22. What happened to him? Oh, he already, He's already had the damage. Like a modified before that. Car already messed up on 22 of Terry, that and was, oh, he just so overshot. That was just him. Yeah, that's just him overshooting the bus stop. I'm not sure what happened to Cody Terry. Yeah. The Cody Terry's car already looking like a modified. We don't even know where that came from, from the damage. And then he overshot for the third different driver oh. to overshoot that area. Figured out what happened to Terry. Lap number 33, he got loose coming off of turn number four. 
and just nose it in the guardrail. And actually, Smith and Hardison had to do a nice job taking evasive action. We were watching uh, pit stops at the time, and Terry snapped loose and came up, almost took out Smith and Hardison, who were second and third at the time. So nice job by them to get through. But boy, Cody Terry, uh, kind of a scary, kind of a scary moment there. And he blew the bus stop again in the 22. Matt Dyer on pit road again, two laps down for his final set of service. But yeah, Cody Terry off of turn number four, broke loose, slung shot up right in front of Smith and Hardison and nose it into the guardrail. Nice job by Smith and Hardison to get through. I don't think we're going to be able to get a replay of it because it was, again, six or seven laps ago at this point. But uh, nice job by the two of them to get through that. Coming down to the home stretch of this race here at Remington at the Glen 110. Round number two of the playoffs for the SNB Cup Series will be next Wednesday night from Talladega. And Greg, we think the road course is going to be crazy. Wait till we see the wild card, the craziness that will happen at Talladega next Wednesday night in that battle for the championship. I cannot wait to see Talladega come full circle once again. That's going to be our second Talladega broadcast in a matter of days, Wesley, because Sunday morning at uh, 9 a.m. Pacific time, noon on the East Coast, we're going to have the Straight Cash Money Mini Series Championship also from Talladega in the Cup Cars. Myself and Justin Prince will be on the call for that championship race. Looking very forward to seeing some of the best iRacing has to offer. Battling it out one more time for some straight cash money. That's coming up Sunday morning here on LSR TV. We got our next broadcast coming up tomorrow night. The Nazra Pulse Poppers Midget Series coming up for round number four from Wheatsport Speedway. Myself and Charles Wooten will be on the call. And then, of course, it's probably our favorite series that we've had in a long time from the short track scene here on LSR TV. The Northwest Tour live from Stafford, another great flat half mile that we've seen some fantastic racing at the last couple of weeks. We saw Lucas Oil. We saw Irwindale. I mean, we'll even throw the miles into the wrench and talk about Milwaukee. Another great racetrack. Stafford Speedway produces some fantastic raceway or fantastic racing that's sunday night and for all the information go to at lsr tv on facebook twitter and instagram give them a like a follow and a share subscribe on the youtube channel and of course live simracing tv.com four to go here at the Glen. deweese running away with things here almost a seven second lead back to caleb smith there's Hardison sitting back third. He is closing in, though, on Smith for the bridesmaid spot as they work through the S's up the straightaway and up the hill. He's still pulling away very, very strong. But lap traffic ahead of Deweese. It's the number seven of Gardner. We haven't had a whole lot of lap traffic come into play here because most drivers, when they go a lap down, it's been on pit road. I believe this is only going to be the second or third time today. Lap traffic is going to play a role here with the race leader. Number 15 of Deweese coming up on Gardner, who right now he's just trying to survive in that number seven car. Through the final right hander heading down the fin or heading down towards the finish line. Deweese coming to three to go. Three to go for Deweese. Looking to sweep the and road. And by courses. the way, Braxton Deweese trying to lap Cody Gardner. That would be the tenth place car to go a lap down. And he'll do it. Gets it done. Picking them up and putting them down one by one through the S's. Uphill to the straightaway and into the bus stop. Final circuits remain. Under 10 miles. In the Remington at Land 110. Round one of the playoffs. Talladega looms next Wednesday night. This is not an elimination series. They'll race for points, just like the old Cup Series playoff days. Person with the most points will be the champion. A four-race playoff series. We at Watkins Glen tonight, which is about to come to an end. Talladega next week. Then they'll take a week off to recharge their batteries. And then it's on to Bristol and Texas to decide the champion. 
coming to two laps to go for Deweese. He's got a huge lead over Caleb Smith. These three were the top three last week at Homestead, but a very or the Brickyard, excuse me, but a very different order. It was Hart or Deweese getting the win, Hardison second, Smith third. So Smith looking to get the better of Hardison tonight. Two to go. Look at Deweese in his own little world. No one around him. No competition. He had that one little slip at the beginning of the race after that mistake error. He has been able to redeem himself over adversity, run back down the field. Put himself back in contention. I know the DeWeese fans on the broadcast chat are going bonkers right now for their driver from Ohio. As he is the number one seed in the playoffs for the SNB Cup Series. Three wins on the regular season, plus the NASCAR or plus the All-Star race win for the series at Charlotte. And he will work his way off of turn number seven and eight. Around Terry. He'll come to the line, Greg. The CRN one to go. White flag about to come to the wind over the field. Deweese one more time around here at the Glen. He dominated the Daytona road course earlier this season for his first win of the season on the SNB Cup Series. And since then, he has opened up the floodgates, coming around looking for his fourth points paying victory and to kick off the playoffs with a victory. That's going to be big for Deweese if he can hold on for just half a lap more as he rips his way down the backstretch for the final time. He'll work his way up the hill at speed. Now the interval almost seconds to Smith. Nowhere in sight. Final time through the bus stop. Through the inner loop, but he makes it around perfectly. Through turns number five around the carousel to the entrance of the boot. The boot is null and void for this race. There's the entrance right there on the upper right. He'll power his way to the west end of the speedway, to that tunnel turn, if you will. The end of the boot looms. Turn number seven. Turn number eight awaits. Braxton Deweese will come off of the final turn. The 15 Toyota will come to the line. Checkered flag is in the wind. He will win race one of the playoffs for the SNB Cup Series. Winner, Braxton Deweese. Season two, fourth win takes the Remington at the Glen 110. And Greg, can we say he dominated it? Two in a row for Deweese and fourth of the season. And yeah, that was a fantastic performance. Watching him slice and dice through the field after the incident earlier in the race, having to fight back. He fell all the way outside the top five. And here he is coming home with a great win. Great shout out as well to Caleb Smith in the number 12 coming home in second. And Joshua Altus able to get by Spencer Hardison there on the last lap to take home third. So Altus sneaks his way onto the podium here to kick the play. Playoffs off big one for him in that number 94 as Smith comes up and gives a congratulatory nudge there to, to Braxton Deweese in the number 15. Altus might come up and do the same here in this one, but for Deweese, fourth of the season, big one here, sweeps the road courses for the SB Cup Series this season. And to redeem himself again after that mistake, that, that could have been a mental error that could have really got in his head and made him make a lot of, you know, get himself down and, and say, man, now I'm out of the chance of winning this thing. It might cost me a championship. No, Ixnay on that. Came back sixth, rallied, took advantage of green flag pit stops the entire sequence of this 45-lap event and was able to get back to the front, get around Stukesbury and Hardison and Smith and take this win in dominating fashion. Big one. Here for Braxton Deweese and his fourth win of the season. Kicks off the playoffs in style. His teammate Keenan Massey coming up and giving him a congratulations as well. Great run here for High Five Racing to get it done at the start of the 
playoffs. But Braxton Deweese, he's the big winner here tonight. Fourth win of the season. Takes sole possession of most wins on the years. The rest of the field has made their way down pit road. Braxton Deweese, he is going to light him up here on the front stretch. Smoke him if you got him because Braxton Deweese noses it into the wall for the fourth time this season. A winner here. Let's take a look as Deweese begins to burn it down on the front stretch. Here are your unofficial race results presented by Sawblade.com. Wesley. Braxton Deweese will pick up the win. Almost eight and a half seconds back to Caleb Smith in second. Joshua Altus, the Daytona winner. A good solid podium for third. Spencer Hardison had some high hopes along the way. He'll finish fourth along with Kenan Massey in the top five. Pillsbury, Jacob Grant will go sixth. Tatum's had problems throughout the night. Stukesbury, Sherwood, Garner, the first car lap down in 10th. Nine cars on the lead lap at the checkered flag. Coming home in the 11th spot is Matthew Gilliams, the Darlington winner earlier this season in 11th. Brockton Packard, two laps down in 12th in the number 24. Matt Dyer in the 13th spot. Cody Terry, Evan Coleman, who was up in the top five before going for the ride there in turn three and four. Unfortunately, not the kickoff to the playoffs he wanted. And especially after the start of the race, he had climbing up 11 spots, was looking for fourth when that happened. Zach Peterson and Jack Ely, the other two drivers that did not finish the race. So that's the way it finishes out. When we come back, we will talk to the top three. Top three, Braxton DeWeese, the big winner here at Remington at the Glen 110 for the SB Cup Series. We'll talk to him in a moment. All right. race winner. Happens every time. I always have to disconnect and reconnect on Discord every time. Oh, man. I was rubbing my guts out at the end there. Yeah, we all we all were me, Caleb and Spencer. I was I was pushing because I had a race leader to catch, and then I overcooked it going into the second to last.
Welcome back to the virtual Watkins Glen International. The Remington at the Glen 110 is in the books. Race number one, a season two for the playoffs. It's on to Talladega. But first, we got to wrap up some business and talk to our top three on the podium. The post-race wrap-up on LSR TV, Greg Rance, Wesley Outland. And now we're going to talk to the driver in third, Joshua Altus, Daytona winner for MP Motorsports. Still staying within a cat's whisker of running for the title. You finished third. The man out of Virginia. What's your take of a uh, a very interesting Watkins Glen? Uh, very quiet. A couple of hiccups here or there, but it went by pretty quickly. Yeah, um, it was it was a great race for us in the number ninety four uh, Vortex Optics Chevy. We uh, I was just telling the fans probably heard me talking uh, in the locker room, so to say. Uh, we. We drove our guts out there. It was a uh, it was a fun race. Um, I got to give a shout out to my buddy Kyle Lockrow. He uh, he came in and, and worked with me a lot this week on road courses and uh, and spotted me tonight, which made a huge difference. Um, just telling me to to bat the corners down, you know, be smooth, don't overdrive it. And man, we uh, we hung in there. We we were a top five car, and uh, you know, we just steadily got better all night and. Uh, at the end there, we were catching both the 12 and the 9, and my spotter just kept telling me, he's like, be smooth, be smooth, you'll get them. And uh, I got up to Spencer a couple, a couple times. I gave him a little little nudge uh, in the 6, and then uh, I think a lap or two later, I, I started wheel hopping a little bit in the bus stop, and I thought we were both going around, and I got in the back of him, and he did a great job of saving it. So. Uh, apologies to him didn't mean to to rough him up there but thankfully we both got away and uh, i was able to set him up and pass him clean sorry josh uh with the race being at the road course and knowing that there was not going to be any cautions here did that affect the strategy and the mindset of all knowing that this was the playoff opener knowing there wasn't going to be a yellow and you just had to go all out for 45 laps you know and i believe the mics were hot when you said you drove your guts out here tonight so was that just a result of there not being any cautions and knowing you don't have a shot for a reset you gotta go 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 from the get-go yeah i mean that's a great question greg it's it's really uh it's measuring kind of your risk versus reward so to say you know you you can push it hard but if you push it too hard and step over that line you know you'll be off the track or, or lock the tires up or wheel hop so you just really got to balance it you know i think when you talk to bradston he'll probably tell you he he wheel hop pretty early in the bus stop and he he dropped way back and had to fight his way back so i mean bradston's one of the best out here and and it happened to him so it's just uh it's a fine line um but overall i'm i'm stoked to be coming away with a third place finish that was my goal heading in here i knew uh, a couple of these guys were gonna be really hard to compete against so um to start the playoffs with a third place finish great points tonight um you know i, I couldn't be happier than that so I can understand the idea of having short tracks, super speedways, intermediate tracks for playoff races. Why a road course? And thank your sponsors at the end. It's a great question, Wesley. I don't know why we put a road course in here. I'm wore out. But um, no, I think uh, just to give a, a balance, you know, we at the SME Cup Series, I mean, you guys know we. it's been so competitive this year. We've had eight different winners. Um, you know, various different skilled drivers in here. And um, our goal, putting these playoffs together, we wanted to test every dynamic. You know, we wanted to uh, test people's road course skills, you know, super speedway, short track, and an intermediate. So we got one of each. Um, and to be the champion, you got to be good at all of them. So, um, yeah, it's we're off to a great start. Um, again, I got to thank uh, Christian Gardner, Appalachian Holler Hunters, for putting this deal on. Special shout out to uh, Tyler Stewartsberry for coming on as an associate partner with us for the remainder of the year. Um, tight end loose off his podcast. Go check it out. Really cool stuff. Um, of course, Vortex Optics on the number 94. And uh, yeah, thank you guys, LSR TV. Really excited to, uh, to have a good start to the playoffs. And we're going to go win Dega next week. Off to Talladega, Joshua Altis, third here tonight at Watkins Glen. Second place going to go to Caleb Smith in the number 12 for CEM Motorsports. Caleb, what's your take of uh, surviving Watkins Glen? Uh, it just seemed like nobody could catch the 15 of Deweese. Yeah, I don't understand how he's that fast. Um, it was the same way Daytona Road Course. Um, we definitely had a better race than we uh, did at Daytona Road Course. Uh, managed to get onto the podium. Um, it was all about staying consistent. Um, I tried at the end 
to catch Braxton, uh, overcooked it going into the second to last corner, and uh, that allowed Spencer and uh, Josh to catch up. Uh, so at that point, I just had to not worry about them in my mirror and just focus on what was ahead of me. And uh, we managed to get second. Caleb, we were watching you battle it out with Spencer Hardison throughout mo- much of the day, but we noticed you guys seem to be on a little bit of a different pit strategy. Was that by design, or was it kind of just you guys trying something at the end to try to see if you guys could muster something up as a Hail Mary to catch Deweese? Um, we we kind of, I wouldn't say staggered it, but um, somebody would announce they were going down pit road, and then we push it a lap later, and then the next one would go down. And then, you know, just trying to, you know, so they'd have fresh tires get back in front. So um, I think I pitted later both times um, and it seemed to have worked. So, All right, buddy, it's off to Talladega. Thank your sponsors on the number 12. Uh, Yes. So uh, I want to thank Rep Sports and Raise Energy uh, for being on the car. Uh, if you use code SMITTY15 on repsports.com, you can get 15% off on your order. Um, I want to thank CEM Motorsports, uh, Matt Dyer, Evan Coleman, Spencer Hardison. Um, you know, fantastic team. Um, happy to be racing with them every single week. And uh, Appalachian Hall at Hunters for sponsoring the league and you guys for broadcasting. Caleb Smith will settle for the number two spot here at the Remington at the Glen 110. To victory lane we go, and we're going to talk to Braxton DeWeese, his fifth win, fourth points win, also counting the all-star race win two in a row, also after winning at Indianapolis last week. Braxton, you had the bullseye on you, but the strategy pulled off. You were able to get the win. But let's talk about your slip early in the going where you went in the bus stop and uh, made that little hiccup, but you were quickly able to redeem yourself and get to victory lane. Yeah, I was very upset that um, that I made that mistake there. What was like I said the last race in my interview, uh, you, you're you're gonna have to have no mistakes, uh, and you're gonna have to stay smooth and and stay fast. And right there, we just we were we were right behind uh, Hardison there. We were catching him. Well, I think we were a little bit faster than him there. Um, and I just I downshifted into third a tad bit later, and then that just caused uh, me to downshift in second just a tad bit later as well. So I started wheel hopping. Um, I was heading for the grass. I didn't want to go through there. So I tried to get it slowed down really quickly so I can go to that little access road right there uh, so I can slow her down and then keep her going. Uh, we were six seconds behind from the leader after I did that from Spencer Hardison. So I knew I had uh, I had to work for it, and uh, we did, and we uh, succeeded. Braxton, tell us about that charge after the incident, because you got the lead a little, little bit past halfway there after the incident. It took you about 20 laps to get up there, so we were watching you ch- rally your way through that. You fell back to sixth on that. Tell us about charging back up through the field, knowing that you had some fast guys to get around. Yeah, I uh, I knew I had to try to be at least smooth so I can uh, save my tires and not cook them, overcook them, so I can uh, be better on the longer run. So I knew I had to save them. Uh, I knew I was a little bit quicker than them guys because I ended up pulling, I think me and Spencer pulled over three seconds to them uh, before I made that mistake. So I knew we were, I was a little bit quicker than them. Uh, the only person I knew I had to battle, really, really battle was Spencer there. Uh, so I'm glad we got around all them guys there and then got to Spencer. Being the man that uh, wins here, what's your thoughts going into Talladega? Um, well, try to finish good, get a good points day. Uh, we had a great point state today, so we're going to try to do what we did today. All right, buddy. Thank your sponsors. Congratulations. Yes, sir. I want to thank my family, uh, the friends and the fans that all tune in, watch me, and support me. I really do appreciate it. Uh, I want to thank Ron's Pizza for being on the car. This was their last race this year. Uh, glad to give them the win on their last race. Uh, I also want to give a shout-out to Bennett's Publical, Ravenwood Enterprise, Scott Marr with Jeff Schmidt, uh, NASCAR Technical Institute, and King Grant Paints for making beautiful paints and high five for let me drive the 15. Fourth win of the season on the points, two in a row. And the man that's the number one seed, Braxton DeWeese, wins here in the opening playoff round of the SMB Cup Series for the Remington at the Glen 110 here tonight. Greg Ranch, your final thoughts as we wrap it up here tonight from New York. 
Great performance from Deweese. Great performance from all the drivers. A relatively clean Watkins Glen race. Got a little hairy there at the end, but it was a lot of fun watching these guys whip it around the two and a half mile road course. But next week, we're going to the true wild card of the playoffs. Talladega. Anything can and will happen on the restrictor play tracks. We all remember what happened at the end coming to the checker flag of the last time this series raced on a restrictor play track. That, of course, being the season opener at Daytona. We can expect more of that and a whole lot more next week at Talladega. I cannot wait to see what happens next Wednesday night here on LSR TV. Same time, same channel. Should be a good one from the wild card. That's the Talladega Super Speedway. We'll have it for you again next week. Next broadcast on LSR TV tomorrow night. Charles Wooten and again, Greg Rance in the chair for the NASRA Midgets. And you'll have that coverage again on LSR TV. Thank you for joining us again. Congratulations to Braxton DeWeese, winner for the SMB Cup Series presented by Appalachian Hauler Hunters. Playoff round one at the Glen. He now prepares with the rest of the drivers for Talladega. For Charles Wooten, for Greg Rance, I'm Wesley Outland. Thank you for watching. God bless you all. Keep on praying for America. And again, we appreciate you being a fan of live sim racing. This broadcast is the copyrighted work of LSR TV and may not be rebroadcast, retranslated, or used in any form without the express written consent of 52 Media LLC and iRacing.com Motorsports Simulations. LSR TV would like to 